Welcome back. Auckland policeman Leo Kaiho is a community constable in West Auckland and in his five years with the New Zealand Police Force, he's responded to many difficult call-outs as a frontline officer and he takes those in his stride. But one particular case was a lot more challenging than usual when he was called on to escort a suicidal young woman to the safety of a hospital for a mental health check. When his official job was finished, he asked if he could pray for her. And that's when she revealed her troubling secret that she was seeing demons. That incident has become immortalized on a wall in Otara's town center, and Constable Kaiho's story is now used as part of the police recruitment drive. I met up with him in Otara and asked him to share his story about what happened that evening. I was working on a um, Friday evening and I um, heard over the police radio that there was a lady threatening to take her life, threatening to commit suicide. And uh, I'm working in the police now for about five years, you know, and being a Christian, um, I've come to understand that, you know, God sends me to um, certain jobs, and these were one of these those jobs. So I saw this young female just sitting in her room, you know, just felt real isolated. Um, she's wearing a beanie, um, hoodie, and glasses, and I could just see that she was uh, just real withdrawn and she didn't want anyone to speak to her, but as police officers, we need to take details and find out what's been happening. So I just started to um, build a rapport with her and try to talk to her, but she was just refusing um, not to talk to me. I've come to understand that, you know, people that try to uh, think of, you know, taking their life, I know that's the devil at work in them. So um, being a Christian, uh, I try to um, um, build up the courage to go shield her because I know that, you know, with what I know, what Jesus can do, you know, she, um, Jesus will be the only one that can help her. So I built up the courage and I walked into the room and then I started, you know, just um, just started to talk to her. And then she goes to me, oh, Father, don't you ever shut up? You know, doesn't your mom tell you to be quiet? And then I was just thinking to myself, I was like, nah, she doesn't do that. And then I just asked her a simple question. I was like, have you ever been to church before? And then... She just she was just quiet. Then I started just to see, you know, tears, you know, just pouring down. And then she told me, you know, I've tried. I've, I've told people, you know, to, um, to help me. But when I tell them about what I go through, um, I never hear from them again. And then I just told her, um, you know, that, to be honest, the only person that can help you is God. God is the only person that can help you in this situation. And she just started crying and then she just started telling me about what was happening to her at night. She was telling me about how she, she saw demons you know, crawling up the walls and all these horrific things that, you know, the demons will do to her at night. And then I just asked her, you know, do you have a Bible? And she goes to me, yeah, I do have a Bible, but when I wake up at, uh, in the morning, I find the Bible in the toilet and I don't know how it got there. And then I just asked her a simple question, would you like me to, to, um, to pray for you? So, uh, and she goes, yes, please. So I just grabbed her hand and just started praying for her. My prayer was simple. I just um, just prayed that God really just set her free from what she was going through. And I can just feel her body, you know, tense up. And I, I think she might've been scared. And, and I was just like, just really know that, you know, God was at work in her. And um, on our way back to, um, to, the, um, to the police station uh, to finish work, I could just feel that um, God wasn't finished with her. I just feel, really feel the Holy Spirit just really tugging in my heart to really, um, you know, just probably go back and um, you know, share with her more. I asked the late shift sergeant if I could um, go back and see this female. And so I went back and when I went back, she was she was finished with the mental health. She was given all the clear to go home. So on our way back, I, they asked me to chop her off back to the woman's refuge. So on our way back there, um, I just started to share to her more about um about you know um, some verses in the bible and also invited her to church so this happened on friday i invited to church on the sunday so i go yeah I'll, I'll, me and my partner will come pick you up on sunday we'll take you to church and she was goes yes they'll be good so we picked up on the um, on the sunday she was still wearing the same um hoodie beanie glasses she was talking a little bit more but still a bit quiet um, so we took her to church, to um, Church Unlimited, and she's never been to Church Unlimited before. And uh, we just, uh, when we parked up, she just looked up at the church building and goes, is that a church? And I went, yeah. And then she just started cursing and swearing and saying all these random things. And I was just praying, you know, you know that God will help us in this situation. And then uh, she managed to calm down. And on our way to, um, on our way um, to the church, all I was thinking was, as long as we get through those doors, as long as we get into church, I know everything's going to be all right. 
And as we were just worshipping, you know, a few minutes into worship, I looked over my shoulder and then I saw her, you know, I saw the beanie start to come off, the hoodie came off, the glasses. And then I was just like, God, you know, I was just watching God at work, you know, and it was so awesome. And at the end, um, our pastor did an altar call at the end of the service, you know, just asking, you know, anyone that would want to receive Jesus Christ into their life. And um, she was the first person. She was the first person to put her hand up and I was just, you know, just praise God, it just gets even better. So yeah, she went up to the front and gave her life to, um, to Jesus Christ, and, and which was awesome. And then I think um, a couple of weeks after that, I think um, some of the leaders at the church continued just to uh, keep in contact with her and help her. And I didn't see her for about a month after that. And when I saw her um, out on the road, she was a whole different person, eh? she's enjoying life, she's with her kids and, and she was just thanking me, um, just thanking me about um, what happened and then later on she told me that, she goes, oh, do you remember that time that you prayed, that we prayed at the hospital? And I was like, yeah, she goes, man, God, it felt like God's power was just like a huge tsunami that came and just swept everything away and I was like, oh, that's, and I was like, wow, that's awesome and, she, and then she started thanking me about, you know, setting her free and I was like, you know, to be honest, it wasn't me that set you free. But, you know, it was the power of God that set you free. I was just there, um, just a, you know, just a mouthpiece and a tool for God to use. And, yeah, and I just, I'm just so blown away about, you know, how God works. And I give him all the glory. Um, and it was just an awesome opportunity to uh, see how mighty our God is. So, yeah, no, it's awesome. That was a wonderful end to that story. And now that's, you know, part of the police recruitment drive. Why do you think they chose you to be the face of their recruitment drive? Um... I'm not quite sure. I think it's just um, just, just, just the way that God works. Um, they could have chose all these other fantastic stories about car chases and arresting people, but I think it's just God's favour, really. And what does it mean to you that your superiors and colleagues in the force accept that faith is an integral part of your job? I think it's, uh, it's, it's been good um, for myself and um, all the other fellow believers in the police as well. It's like they're almost saying that it's a right to pray for people if need in, in our job. So for me, being a Christian, uh, it's just, you know, I enjoy my job because I can do these things. And um, each day I go to work, I just know that, you know, I just really ask God just to guide me in everything that I do, the decisions that I make. It doesn't matter um, if I'm dealing with um, victims or members of the community or even offenders, you know. Um, you know, I try to treat people the way they, they should be treated. I try to use my faith in everything that I do because it's really important to me. It's been challenging, but no, it's been good.